Hello and welcome to this presentation on how Exabeam, Okta, and Netscope come together to provide contextually driven real-time security. In this case, Howard is an employee logging in for the first time today. He's using his Okta Verify to make sure that he has the right credentials to gain access to his dashboard. You can see he's got a number of applications. He's going to check his email. And as he logs in, he's going to see that he's got a new email from his boss. And his manager is saying there's a mandatory meeting, realignment, announcements, organizational changes. Howard's no dummy. He knows what's coming. He believes that he's going to get fired. And rather than get fired, he's going to go ahead and indulge himself in an email to his boss saying, I quit. But before he sends this email, he has a moment of epiphany. He decides he probably should download some useful information for his next job. So he goes into the most important repository of information that he has access to, Salesforce. Once inside Salesforce, he's going to go ahead and go to the crown jewels of information, which are customer account information. He's going to download this to his work laptop, which he's accessing. And in the course of downloading, this transaction is running through the Netscope Security Cloud. Because this is a sensitive application, it prompts him while suspending that transaction to revalidate himself. He does and is allowed to download that information. Now, however, he's going to engage in some very dangerous behavior. He's going to go ahead and upload this to his personal drive instance, which will enable him to exfiltrate the data. The company will not allow this, however. By utilizing Netscope's advanced DLP engine, we're able to differentiate between transactions between sanctioned instances or unsanctioned personal instances, in this case, of G Drive. And so Netscope is going to continuously block his attempts to engage in this dangerous behavior. This is frustrating. But let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Exabeam has an advanced user event behavioral analysis engine, which enables it to stitch together multiple events to assemble an overall risk score. As you can see, Howard has a very high risk score. And in fact, his risk score has been going up in the last few weeks. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what exactly has been going on with this massive peak, which is probably what's related to Howard's being let go by the company. So you can see there's a number of events that have been stitched together and associated with Howard. And the analytics engine is able to do this by pulling in logs from Netscope and Oct as well as other systems to put together a timeline that an analyst can examine in better understanding why Howard is such a high risk. What activities are he engaging in? And you can see that in looking in data insights, there's additional contextual factors that can be highlighted in any given risk score computation and different behaviors result in different incremental risk scores. So in this case, the engine is showing his downloads, it's showing DLP alerts, it's showing his multi-factor authentication attempts, and it's showing his ultimate attempt unsuccessfully to upload information into his private instance. But now we're gonna go ahead and show another part of the Exabeam integration with Netscope and Okta, which is the ability to move users from one Okta group to another. In this case, there is only one user in the high-risk user group inside Okta. It's Dan Malkovich, not Howard. But through the inter integration with the incident responder in Exabeam, we're able to take notable user Howard and manually move him into the high-risk user group, which is going to have a material impact on the applications that he has access to inside Okta and the activities that he can engage in inside Netscope. This is a manual action in this use case, but in fact, the administrator could set this up to automatically happen once Howard achieves a certain risk score. You can see that the action has been completed successfully and that Howard has in fact been added to a group. Let's verify this inside Okta by looking at the high risk user group. Now there are two users, Dan is no longer alone. Howard has been added as a staged user which will allow Okta to now map him to that high-risk user group. So let's go back and look at his dashboard. Howard has obviously been unsuccessful in uploading information. So he's gonna to try to see something else. He's gonna see if there's a problem with his login. And everything seems fine, but he's gonna to go to NetSuite and see if he can get some additional information. Now you can see that access to the application is no longer allowed. And this is because he's in that high-risk user group. Okta is no longer allowing him to access NetSuite. Howard is unaware of this, so he's going to go ahead and refresh his screen because this is unusual. And oh, now he sees what he actually has access to, which the only thing he can do is open up a ticket inside ServiceNow. 
This essentially enables us to lock down Howard from a longer term perspective so that the incident responder, HR teams, and IT teams can work together to better understand where Howard sits relative to the access to confidential or sensitive information inside the corporate IT infrastructure, both on-prem as well as in the cloud, ultimately delivering the highest and best real-time security architecture and identity architecture. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope that it has been helpful.